actually reading a book about the Prophet Sallallahu life and about how the people of his time worshipped other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I actually learned something new. I learned that a lot of the people at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually believed that there was one God. And they believed that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was the God, right? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was God, that's it. It was just Him. But then they also believed that there were righteous individuals and things that could intercede on behalf of them. So they didn't believe that there was just a clear gateway between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you could talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly and he will directly hear you they believed that you needed to use other things in order to have that thing send that message to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so for example if it was a righteous man that has passed away they would worship their shrine in the hopes that that righteous man would then bring their message up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Okay, and obviously we know that this is haram. Obviously we know that this is completely not okay Islamically because no one can give you other than Allah SWT. No one can provide for you other than Allah SWT. So you heard the lady, it's haram to have an intercessor between you and Allah. It's haram, akhi. Don't do it. It's shirk to have someone between you and Allah because only Allah can provide. So when you pray, you can only pray to Allah. But what does Islam teach us? What do Muslims do when they pray? Let us investigate if Islam is actually haram or not, as this lady said. Does Islam teach us that there are intercessors between Allah and Muslims? Sahih Muslim 804a recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it so the Quran will be an intercessor a mediator between Allah and the Muslims but the lady said it's haram it's haram akhi. Sunan ibn Majah hadith number 3781 Abu Umama said, he heard Allah's Messenger say, recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. An intercessor between Allah and the Muslims. Last time I checked, the lady says, it's haram, akhi. <laughs> <laughs> Sunan al Nisa'i, hadith number 2919. O Abu Abdul Rahman, why do I only see you touching these two corners, i.e., the black stone and the Yemeni corner? He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, touching them erases sins. But last time I checked, the Muslim lady said, it's haram to have anyone between Allah and the Muslims. It seems that the Kaaba, i.e. the black stone in the Yemeni corner, can erase sins if you touch them according to the Prophet of Islam. So it seems that Muslims are actually not thinking and they have no clue about the fact that there are always in Islam objects between Allah and the Muslims. Not only that, even Muhammad can be an intercessor and Muslims actually pray to Muhammad when they pray their five daily prayers. Watch. Let me explain. Most of the time when Muslims are praying, they're reciting words that are directed towards Allah. But there's a part of their prayers where they say, Assalamu alaika ayyuhan nabiyu. Here's an example from a Muslim video explaining how to perform salah, Islamic prayer and worship. Assalamu alaika ayyuhan nabiyu. Why is this important? Well, Assalamu alaika ayyuhan nabiyu doesn't mean 
peace be upon the prophet, or God please send peace upon the prophet, it means peace be upon you, O prophet. So Muslims around the world are speaking directly to Muhammad during this portion of their prayers. In fact, here's another clip from a Muslim instructional video that includes the translation. Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sadly, Muslims don't see a problem here. We are just sending peace and blessings on the Prophet. But there's a world of difference between, on the one hand, Allah please give peace to the Prophet, and on the other hand, peace be upon you, O Prophet. In the former, you're talking to Allah about Muhammad. In the latter, you're talking to Muhammad himself. So as you see, you're talking to Muhammad himself when you pray. So when you pray, you're actually praying to Muhammad. So we have the black stones, we have the Quran, and we have Muhammad that are actually gods in Islam. But the lady said, it's haram, it's shirk. So why do you Muslims not think? You pray five times a day and you mention Muhammad and you are praying to Muhammad. Now when you Muslims pray, you say Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're actually praying directly to Muhammad when you pray your five daily prayers. This is clear shirk, isn't it Muslims? Hmm. You Muslims don't see the hypocrisy here? You're actually talking directly to Muhammad instead of Allah. The lady said, it's haram, akhi. Hmm. Muslims, you really need to start thinking here with me. It's 2020. You have to understand that Muhammad actually loved to be worshipped by you. This is why he commanded you to talk directly to him when you pray your five daily prayers. And on top of that, Islam is nothing but blasphemy. Kissing and touching the black stone and the Yemeni corner because they can erase sins. And on top of that, the Quran that will come as a pale man and intercede for all the Muslims. Muslims, clearly this is not haram, is it? Hmm. If they are truly sincere Muslims who care about the truth and their salvation, those Muslims that can think in 2020 need to drop Muhammad as a fake prophet, leave Islam, the man-made cult created 1400 years ago, and come back home to Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Thank you for watching. Please download this video and share it all around social media. Thank you for watching and God bless.